For the last five years, I've been using these two Samsung 23 inch monitors. They're very basic TM monitors with not very good color accuracy. And I've been having to center the monitors just to play games. Well, all that's about to change. How's it going guys? Cheese here at Cheese Out and Everything. And as you can see, I just got myself the LG 49 Ultra Wide. With the recent PC upgrade, it wouldn't be doing it any justice if I didn't upgrade the monitor as well. For the longest time, this monitor was $1,600 and I just couldn't justify paying that much for it. But luckily, a couple days ago on Amazon, this monitor went on a lightning deal and I picked this monitor up for $1,000 Canadian. So I finally thought that was worth the upgrade at that price. Let me show you what this monitor is like by doing a little unboxing. It's really heavy. Oh, check that out. Well, this is definitely a lot bigger than I expected it to be. Hope it does fit on my desk. Uh, without the stand, I think it's uh, 33 pounds. So it's definitely not gonna work on my floating IKEA shelf. So I'm gonna have to get a visa mount for this on the wall. Which isn't a problem because this is Visa compatible. It has the 100 by 100 Visa mount adapter. And I just ordered it off Amazon for 40 bucks. I'll leave the link below. Oh, looking up the sweat. Holy, this thing's a lot bigger than I thought it was. So before I get too excited, let's see what else is in the box. Got the stand, which I'm not gonna use. The back plate, which I'm gonna need. We got a bunch of cables. Let's see what they give us. We got a standard PAL cable, a USB-C cable, HDMI, and a DisplayPort cable. So right here it actually says, the HDMI cable only supports up to 3840 by 1080. So in order to use a full res of 5120 by 1440, you're gonna have to use the DisplayPort cable. So just make sure that your video card has uh, support for it before you get this monitor. So the timing couldn't be more perfect. As I'm recording the video, the doorbell just rang and my Visa mount came in. This is the Mounting Dream wall mount for the monitor. Comes with a bunch of adapters for all different types of Visa mounts up to 400 by 400, pretty flat so you can uh, have the monitor sit pretty close to the wall. And here are all the components. So with the Visa mount being 100 by 100, we actually don't need this plate. Before we bolt the monitor on this, let's put this onto the wall, make sure it's level and straight. Get yourself a stud finder and find the two by four because you can't mount this on the drywall only. Before you start drilling, put a, use a piece of paper, put it underneath so you don't have to do so much cleanup after. And this thing is not coming off. All right, so here comes the hard part, putting the monitor onto the stand. Holy smokes. So let me just take you through some of the tech specs. This is an IPS monitor with a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. It has a light sensor at the top, but I'll leave that off for editing purposes. There's a headphone jack with two USB ports on the side, two more on the bottom with a USB-C port, along with a display port and two HDMI in ports. Wow, this is a huge display. A startup Premiere, which is what this monitor is basically made for. All right, so my Premiere is all over the place because it used to be on two monitors so now it doesn't know where to put any of the stuff on the second monitor so let's rearrange this so it looks proper so now we got all the preview files on one side the lumetri color exposure and all those settings over here 
and I got a pretty big window still for the source and the program previews. Over here I got the lumetri scopes and then the effect controls on the side. So everything's nice and centered, no more bar in the middle, really nice. I'm currently powering this monitor with an ASUS GTX 1070 Ti, the advanced spin version. And even at full resolution, Premiere isn't lagging, so that's a good thing. I didn't want to spend another thousand dollars on the top of the line video card just to power this monitor. It does come with two 10 watt speakers built in, but the sound quality coming out of it isn't exactly that great. I would still recommend dedicated speakers if you want decent sound quality. For all you gamers out there, I'll look elsewhere for a monitor with better refresh rate. The monitor is only 60 hertz, overclockable in Windows to 75, but it's definitely not ideal for gaming, especially first person shooters. One thing I do love about this monitor though is the KVM switch, which lets you use the laptop and the desktop all on the same screen with the same keyboard and mouse. Mind you, you do have to plug in all your peripherals into the monitor instead of the computer. So make sure you have long enough cables for your keyboard and mouse or have a USB hub to extend the cables up to the monitor. All in all, I have to say this monitor is pretty amazing. I would recommend it if it is at the sale price of $1,000 Canadian, but any higher than that, I think it is a little bit overpriced. Hope you like this honest review. Hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Until the next one, peace.